Taiwan just held their presidential election, choosing former Vice President La ching te as their new leader, ushering in a third consecutive term for the Democratic Progressive Party. A party denounced by China because they are diametrically opposed to their plan to have Taiwan reunited with the People's Republic of China. This is a critical point in the relations between China and the US. President Biden quickly reassured China that they do not support the independence of Taiwan, but among Congress members, many support the continued strength of Taiwan's democracy in standing up to China, who have been escalating their military presence in Taiwanese airspace for the last couple of years. What's happening in Taiwan is one example Ray Dalio gives for why he predicts that geopolitical conflicts are a moderately high risk area in 2024. According to Dalio, 2024 is a pivotal year for investors and the economy, not just because of the geopolitical tensions, but also the conflicts within the borders of the US, the changes to how money flows in the global economy and the radical shifts happening in technology. Ray Dalio's career has been built on his ability to understand the cycles of events that ripple across time. So where exactly are we in these cycles? How are they converging and influencing one another? And what does it mean for us in 2024? Put it simply, for next year, are you optimistic about the global economy or pessimistic? Pessimistic. According to Dalio, 2024 is what he calls a pivotal year. A year that will stand out among most with significant events relating to economics, politics, technology and acts of nature. Events that mark our position in the long-term cycles. Changes in the world happen slowly and are only noticeable once you zoom out over decades or centuries. It's then that you can see that while predicting specific events is often impossible, the occurrence of large-scale events arise from clear cause and effect relationships between a few key forces, the forces that make up how the world works. The first is the productivity force. Over time, humans accrue information and create new things that improve the overall standard of living. The agricultural revolution in 17th century Britain saw huge increases in the crop yield on farmland and huge rises in populations, driven by human inventiveness, such as creating better roads and canals and ways to transport food more effectively. The industrial revolution of the late 18th century from the development of steam engines and textile machines, the scientific revolutions that birthed modern medicine and almost doubled the life expectancy since the mid-1800s, and of course the digital revolution with the invention of computers, the internet, and today the early stages of artificial intelligence. The second force are the debt cycles. Although debt comes with a lot of negative connotation, debt is actually really effective at moving money from people who have too much but no usefulness for it to people who don't have money but have an idea or an invention that could improve our lives. But it also creates the short and long-term debt cycles. The short-term cycle runs for about five to eight years and it's the boom and bust of the economy that everyone watching this has experienced at least once. The long-term debt cycles can last for over a century. It reflects the persistent increase in debt over long periods of time, particularly by the government, until it reaches an unsustainable level. The third force is the internal political conflicts between the Democratic and Republican parties. Conflicts of socialism and capitalism, of progressive and conservative values. Just like debt, the political system has contributed in the long run to increases in productivity, but also does operate in cycles. The fourth force is the external political conflicts. Different countries improve and grow at different rates, and as the relative strength of countries shifts, conflicts arise that impact the world order. And lastly, the acts of nature force. Floods, droughts, pandemics, and climate change contribute to changes in the other forces. Dalio has studied the data behind these forces as they ripple across time, because in his view, measuring and tracking the cycles can give us a glimpse of what the economies of countries around the world will look like over the next decade. And 2024 in particular is a pivotal year along that curve. In his recent memo, he explained his predictions for the stock market, the economy, the US election, external political conflicts, and the rise of artificial intelligence. Despite a global pandemic playing a major role,
role in the economic environments that we've seen over the past few years, the economy, or more specifically, the debt cycles have actually behaved exactly how they normally do at every stage. Meaning the general broad trends around inflation, interest rates, and the stock market have been fairly predictable. As the pandemic took hold, everything collapsed. The stock market was down, economic growth went negative, plunging the US into recession, inflation plunged into deflation, falling almost an entire percent in April of 2020. The central bank and government response was swift and aggressive. The government spent trillions of dollars supporting households and businesses, causing their budget deficits to explode from under $1 trillion in 2019 to over $3 trillion. And the debt needed to support all of that extra spending mostly came from the Federal Reserve, who lowered interest rates to zero and expanded their balance sheet by almost $3 trillion as they printed money and purchased government bonds. The enormous stimulus then drove everything up. The stock market rose, economic growth recovered, and of course, prices went up a lot. So as the pandemic threat eased and inflation became the main problem in the economy, the Federal Reserve started reversing some of its stimulus, raising interest rates fast, and stopping its purchase of government bonds, reducing its balance sheet by $1.5 trillion. Which brings us to today, where inflation is almost back in an acceptable range, and while economic growth has slowed, the restrictive monetary policy hasn't plunged the US back into recession, as it typically does at this part in the cycle. Unlike past debt cycles, household income and savings were at very healthy levels. And the unemployment rate has stayed extremely low. So while certainly difficult, on average, households have been able to handle the rising cost of living. So that begs the question, have we achieved a soft landing? Has the Fed walked the so-called golden path between high inflation and an economic recession? Well, the markets certainly believe so. Markets are currently pricing in the Federal Reserve's inflation and interest rate targets. Dalio disagrees. His outlook for 2024 is that inflation won't fall as much as expected that PCE will end up around 4% in 2024, a percentage point higher than the Fed's current projection. And because inflation will be higher than expected, interest rates will be lowered less than expected. Dalio thinks that the rate hikes done so far will begin to affect the economy negatively in 2024, as household savings run down and people start to cut back in a meaningful way. And the interest expense on debt for corporations will rise as existing debts mature and need to be refinanced at a much higher cost. But while these risk factors do exist, Dalio doesn't see any big trouble coming for the economy in 2024, and admits there's a lot of imprecision in these sorts of estimates, so he doesn't have strong bets placed on them. The debt cycles isn't where Dalio sees the big risks in 2024. That's not the reason why this is a pivotal year. The real risks are related to the internal and external political conflicts going on right now. The single biggest risk in 2024, according to Dalio, is the clash between the right and the left. In fact, he believes we're currently in the fifth stage of the long-term cycle, the stage right before a civil war. In his book, Principles for Dealing with the Changing World Order, he describes what it looks like. There are always disagreements on both sides of politics, but over time, those differences become larger, and people begin strongly aligning with one side or the other, leading to more extreme views, unwillingness to listen to alternative ideas, and a breakdown of rules and order. Dalio sees this happening in a big way, with the strong reactions on both sides around the Israel and Palestine conflict as a recent example, and an increase in partisanship being favoured over fact-based reporting in the media. He put 2024 as a high-risk year for civil war in the US, and predicts there's a 50% chance of it occurring within the next decade. The internal conflicts also aren't just confined to the US. The outcomes of the US election swinging one way or another will have big ramifications for the external factor. He writes, Trump being elected likely means leaving NATO, more tariffs on imports and reduced taxes, regulations and green initiatives. 
whereas a democratic government would likely take things in the complete opposite direction. Dalio puts the conflicts between countries at a moderately high risk in 2024, particularly regarding the relative power of the US and China. For decades, China's economy has been catching up with the US, with the gap reaching its closest point in 2020. China is becoming increasingly competitive on a global scale, especially in cutting edge technologies such as solar and wind power generation, electric vehicles and batteries. And historically, when a rising power challenges the current world order, a war is the result. But we do live in a very unique time, where both countries recognise the mutually assured destruction that would occur in the event of a modern military world war. So the two countries are engaging in pretty much every other type of war trade wars, technology wars, and capital wars. Dalio's prediction for 2024 is that the intense competition between China and the US will continue, but no violent conflict will begin. And he also doesn't see the Russia-Ukraine or Israel-Palestine wars spreading into something larger. Again, because the big supporters on both sides are acutely aware of the permanent consequences of introducing nuclear weapons into the mix. So that brings us to productivity the force that's been driving an increase in standard of living for centuries. And recently, it's been in the form of artificial intelligence. We've all seen the huge leap into generative AI, and in 2024, the innovations aren't slowing down. Runaway is the tech startup which created Stable Diffusion in 2023, a wildly impressive text-to-image AI model. And they recently released Gen 2, which can now convert text or images into videos. We've also seen the first multimodal models which can be trained to do a variety of tasks, bringing us closer to general purpose robotics. And a lot of the technology that we already use will just get a lot better with AI. Uh, your voice assistant on your phone, for example, will have a generative AI model on your phone. So your assistant doesn't need to think while it sends or uploads your voice recording to the cloud. So things are just gonna get a lot smarter and a lot faster. I don't personally agree with everything Dalio says, but I like listening to his perspective because it's always well-researched and rational. I don't change how I'm investing based on any of these predictions, but I do like learning how he sees the world. And I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, check out some of these videos next.